Greetings, mother factors, hello, and welcome to Andrew One Fact. My name is Sam, and today I'm here to talk to you about a fella who's about to become one of the most powerful in the world. And luckily for us, he loves ice cream, so he's definitely going to start airdrops of that worldwide, right? Anyway, it's Joe Biden. We've done presidents in the past, so hey, why not go with the president-elect? But what policies and opinions has Mr. Biden shifted on over the past, uh, many decades? Which sitcom is he a star of? And how many death threats am I going to get in the comments for even doing this video? Hopefully it's none. Two out of three of those questions are going to be answered, because what am I going to do? Look at the comments section? So prepare for an inauguration into Factum, baby, with 101 facts about Joe Biden. Number one. Joseph Robinette, yep, seriously, Biden Jr. was born on the 20th of November 1942 in Scranton, Pennsylvania. Yep, the same Scranton as The Office, the electric city. Number two. In case you were wondering off the bat, by the way, the name Robinette sounds like a female version of Batman's sidekick, which is a redundant statement because there has been a female Robin, but anyway. It's actually his paternal grandmother's maiden name, like John Fitzgerald Kennedy, for example. The name is supposedly of French origin, however genealogists have never been able to trace it exactly. Number three. Biden was born to Catherine Eugenia Jean Biden and Joseph Robinette Biden Sr. at St. Mary's Hospital. He, like me, is the oldest and coolest sibling of the Biden clan, later followed by his siblings Valerie, Francis and James. Number four. Speaking of him being the oldest, he is, well, no escaping it, he's old. At 77, he'll be the oldest president ever inaugurated to the White House. He even said in January of 2020 that he needed to pick a younger vice president to take over right away because of his age. Which, to be fair, also leaves open many, many different vacancies if the criteria is just younger than Joe Biden. Number five. Joe is very proud of his Irish heritage, which is great crack. I'm half Irish, I'm allowed to say it. He'll also be the second ever Catholic president after JFK. Number six. But let's take a look at his early life. He was called Joey when he was little. Wow, what a shock. When he was 10, they moved to Wilmington in Delaware, living in a three bed house. He and his two brothers shared a bedroom with their uncle named Boo Boo because he had a stutter. And my son is a cat and he doesn't love me. Number seven. From around high school age, Joe Biden started to suffer from a stutter, and as a result was bullied by his classmates. Even the teachers, who were also nuns by the way, got in on it too, one of which called him b, -b, -b biden Number 8. Biden's mother was understandably not too happy with this and lambasted her, saying that she would knock the bonnet off her head if she mocked him again. Which I think is a threat, but just knocking someone's hat off just sounds inconvenient. Number 9. He eventually overcame this stutter by the time his high school career ended. He never received actual treatment for it, but instead he taught himself to try and overcome it by standing in front of a mirror and trying to relax his face more while reciting passages he'd memorised, you know, like the Sims do. A stutter is never completely gone though, and it can crop up on occasion. Number 10. Before graduating in 1961, in a neat bit of foreshadowing that's a little too on the nose if you ask me, he was class president in both his senior and junior years of high school, as well as being a halfback and wide receiver on the high school football team, whatever that means, and he was on the baseball team. Number 11. His football coach, E. John Walsh, stated that Biden was a skinny kid, but he was one of the best pass receivers I had in 16 years as a coach. So, you know, if the presidency doesn't work out for you, Joe, you can always... Go back to that. Number 12. Following high school, Biden attended the University of Delaware in Newark, where he continued playing football, but also earned himself a Bachelor of Arts degree with a double major in history and political science and a minor in English. Number 13. He eventually also attended Syracuse University, where he studied law and graduated in 1968. He can't get enough of the classrooms, this lad. Number 14. In fact, it was at Syracuse University, or rather on a spring break trip to the Bahamas, where Biden met and married his first wife, Nelia Hunter, who was the homecoming queen. Hey, we have one of those, but for the country. Love you, Liz. Number 15. On his first date with his wife, Nelia, Joe committed a cardinal sin in that he didn't have enough money to pay for the meal, and was mortified. Nelia, though, was very nice about it and put his mind at rest, which Joe described as her special touch. Number 16. After the pair were married, they moved to Wilmington, Delaware, where Biden was on the Newcastle County Council, and they had three children, Joe Jr., better known as Beau, Hunter, and Naomi. Number 17. Biden kept ties with Syracuse. He's returned to visit Syracuse University dozens of times, gave commencement addresses and other speeches five times at SU, and his son Beau Biden also graduated from Syracuse's law school. So they're, you know, pretty Syracuse to him now. Syracuse to- Number 18. 
He was also awarded the George Arendt Pioneer Medal in 2005 by Syracuse University, which is their highest alumni award, by the way, for excellence in public affairs. Number 19. After Biden finished law school, apparently a big war was happening in Vietnam. Never heard of it. He was actually drafted for military service, but couldn't go due to his asthma. Number 20. Biden briefly practiced law for a firm in Wilmington, practice makes perfect after all, but he disliked the fact he would often be defending the rich and powerful, and so changed to becoming a public defender instead. A bit like Batman. A bit. Or Daredevil. But he wasn't rich and couldn't see. Number 21. This philosophy probably comes from his father, Joseph Biden Sr., who similarly quit his job at a car dealership because of the boss's behaviour at a Christmas party. This boss would throw coins onto the floor for his employees to fight and scrabble for. His son wrote in his book that the thing he couldn't stand was people who lauded it over the less fortunate, and he couldn't stand people who abused power of any kind. Number 22, ooh, ooh. Anyway, in the late 1960s, Biden actually identified himself as a Republican, but a liberal one. This then changed when he worked for a different firm instead, with a politically active Democrat in charge. Make your mind up, Joe. Oh, he has, hasn't he? Number 23. He was then appointed to a county council seat, which I guess gave him his first taste of being successfully elected, and he craved more. Much like Palpatine, do it. although arguably in a far less galactic genocide way, he had his eye on the Senate. Number 24. In 1972, Biden ran as a Democrat in the Senate race for Delaware. His campaign had very little money and relied on word of mouth and face-to-face -face meetings. Number 25. And it worked. Biden beat the incumbent Republican Caleb Boggs, unfortunate name that, in a shock victory considering he wasn't really given any serious chance. He was only 29 at the time of the victory, being sworn in at age 30. However, a tragedy would soon come in the meantime. Number 26. On December 18th, 1972, a few weeks after Biden won the Senate election, their family car was hit by a tractor-trailer truck in Hockesson after Christmas shopping. This tragically killed his wife Nelia and one-year-old Naomi, and left Bo and Hunter with serious life-threatening injuries. Number 27. Biden was in Washington at the time when he received a phone call saying his wife and baby had died, and his sons Bo and Hunter, almost three and four years old at the time, were clinging to life. As a result, they spent months in the hospital. Number 28. After the accident, as documented in his book, he considered giving up the Senate seat he'd just won, and instead joining the priesthood. Number 29. Biden would often find himself walking around more dangerous neighborhoods, actively hoping that someone there would pick a fight with him. This rage and appetite for self-destruction came from the loss of his wife and infant daughter. Number 30. His father could tell that he was losing his grip on life, and gave him a framed picture of a comic strip called Hagar the Horrible, in which Hagar is stranded on a rock and shouts to God, Why me? To which God replied, Why not? This was meant to convey to him that there's no way of rationalising the tragedy that had befallen him. He still has this framed cutout to this day. Number 31. He was called by many other Democratic senators like Hubert Humphreys and Mike Mansfield, who insisted he should stay in the Senate. They convinced him and he was sworn in, but he didn't want to leave the bedside of his sons and so was sworn in at the hospital. Number 32. In remembrance of his wife and daughter, Biden does not work on December the 18th, the anniversary of the accident. Number 33. Three years later in 1975, Joe's brother Frank set him up on a blind date with a woman named Jill that he knew from college. Hi, hello, Jill. And just two years later, the pair were married, but not before Joe proposed five times. There's a joke there somewhere about him persistently trying to run for president too, but I'll let you do that in your head. Number 34. Dr. Jill Biden, to use her full name, was reluctant to marry Joe after her first divorce from Bill Stevenson, as well as the knowledge that a life with Joe would also mean being in the public eye. <laughs> Boy, was she right. Number 35. Four years after their marriage in 1977, their daughter Ashley Biden was born in June of 1981, who, like her half-brothers, has become very involved in social activism and politics alongside her father. Number 36. The Biden boys have called Jill their mum, despite her never legally adopting them. She considers them all to be her children, and in Joe Biden's book, Promises to Keep, he wrote, Nelia would always be mummy, but Jill was mum. Number 37. Mr. Biden often proudly refers to himself as Jill Biden's husband, and after securing the Democratic nomination, he told an audience, Just think of your favourite educator who gave you the confidence to believe in yourself, that's the kind of first lady Jill will be. Number 38. Later in 1988, Joe Biden was admitted to the Walter Reed Army Medical Center with severe neck pain, and was diagnosed with a leaking brain aneurysm. While recovering from the surgery, he also had a pulmonary embolism, which is a blockage of an artery in the lungs. Basically, the long and short of it is, he's lucky to survive. Number 39. 
And if that wasn't enough, he had a second aneurysm less than three months later. Biden then had to take several months leave from his job at the Senate to recover from the surgeries. Number 40. Sadly, another medical tragedy would strike the Bidens later in 2015 when their eldest son Bo died following a four-year battle with brain cancer aged just 46. He was survived by his wife Haley and two children Natalie and Robert aged 11 and 9 respectively. Number 41. In his memoirs, Biden notes that staffers had bets on how long he would last before resigning, as he had trouble focusing after the loss of his wife and daughter. He also would insist that his work be interrupted at any time if his sons called, as they came first. The meaning of life. After that tragic crash, he remained in his home in Wilmington, Delaware. He then took the 75-minute Amtrak train to and from Washington each day for more than 30 years. He is called the Amtrak Cruise family and has even hosted barbecues for conductors and attendants at his home as he spent so much time with them. Number 43. Looking at his later political career, he's run for president three separate times, in 1987, 2008, and... when was the other one? Um, oh, 2020! Rather embarrassingly, he dropped out of that first one because he was accused of plagiarising a speech by Neil Kinnock of the British Labour Party. Apparently that was enough for people to drop out in those days. Number 44. During his stint in the US Senate, Biden was one of the poorest members, having a net worth of between 59,000 to 366,000. Which sounds like a lot, sure, but it's nothing compared to the millionaires that accompanied him in the Senate. Number 45. As a man with many, many years of politics under his belt, he hasn't been without controversy. For example, in the 70s, Biden opposed court-ordered busing. Now, busing was a method of promoting racial integration within schools by running buses from black neighborhoods to white majority schools. Number 46. He later said that he favoured other ways to desegregate, such as in housing, and that he supported voluntary busing, just not court-ordered. He said the solution was to make better schools everywhere. Number 47. He also co-wrote the 1994 Violent Crime Control and Law Enforcement Act, which hardened federal prison sentences and has been criticised by lawmakers today for disproportionately incarcerating black and brown Americans. Number 48. This bill did include other measures though, like banning large magazine assault weapons from being manufactured, as well as the Violence Against Women Act. Number 49. He's also said he considers the Violence Against Women Act to be the most significant legislation he's ever crafted during his 35-year tenure in the Senate, having been renewed by Congress in 2000 and 2005. Number 50. The crime bill also included an expansion of the death penalty for further crimes like terrorism or carjackings that end in homicide or drive-by shootings. However, in the 2020 presidential race, he ran on a platform of abolishing the death penalty completely. Number 51. Another controversial decision that Biden made decades ago was to vote in support of the controversial Don't Ask, Don't Tell US military policy that deemed open homosexuality incompatible with army life in 1993. He also voted for the 1996 Defense of Marriage Act, which allowed states to not recognize gay marriage. Number 52. It's worth noting that he's since evolved on these issues too. After all, in 2010, he repealed Don't Ask, Don't Tell alongside President Obama nearly 20 years later. Number 53. He dropped out of that aforementioned 2008 presidential race to become a running mate to Obama. It seemed like that might have always been the plan, because he described his then-democratic rival as the first mainstream African-American who's articulate and bright and clean and a nice-looking guy. Wow, what a flirt. And also, that quote is not good. Number 54. After getting less than 1% of the votes in the Iowa caucuses, which for those who, like me, are not US political experts, basically means a meeting of a political party to nominate candidates and policies, etc. Anyway, Biden got less than 1% of the votes from these guys, which isn't good. He dropped out that evening. I can't imagine why. Number 55. But hey, he then became the veep to Barry's... Reap? After Biden stepped down from the presidential race, Obama approached him at George W. Bush's final State of the Union speech, asking for his support in the primaries against the Clintons. Number 56. Now, Biden was quite close to the Clintons and so said he would remain neutral until the nomination was settled. So, when Obama won the primaries, he asked Biden in August to be the VP and the rest, as they say, l'histoire. Number 57. But hey, we've got 101 facts here, so let's talk about that history. Following his vice president nomination, the Catholic bishop of Biden's hometown of Scranton barred Joe from getting Holy Communion in the city because of his support for abortion rights. Number 58. It's a controversial topic over in the state, but in response to this, Biden said that while his political and Catholic influence belief is that life does start at conception, he would not impose his personal beliefs on others. Number 59. 
Previously, in 1974, he told a reporter that when it comes to issues like abortion, I don't think that a woman has the sole right to say what should happen to her body. This was in response to the Roe vs Wade trial, the court case that changed the law on abortion. Yikes. In fact, in 1981, he voted for a constitutional amendment that would let states overturn Roe vs Wade. Number 60. Now that being said, he's since reversed his position. Remember what I said earlier on him not imposing his personal view on others? Something that the internet could sure learn from. He's also been working with his daughter Ashley to bring awareness to women's issues during the 2020 presidential election. So you know, making steps. Number 61. His vice presidency didn't stop him from running for re-election in the Delaware Senate seat as well though, and he won for the seventh time, becoming the youngest senator ever to start a seventh full term as senator. Number 62. Biden resigned from the Senate on January the 15th, 2009, just nine days after being sworn in, following his final vote to support the Troubled Asset Relief Program. He was replaced by fellow Democrat Ted Kaufman. Number 63. During his first term, Biden was in charge of the Iraq stuff, visiting the country every two months to talk with leaders there and communicate what the White House was thinking. He also took the lead in infrastructure, which is an important thing in the world of politics, apparently. Nintendo 64. In 2009, Biden was awarded with the Gold Medal of Freedom from Kosovo for his support of their independence back in the 1990s. This also happens to be Kosovo's highest possible award, so they clearly like old Joe over there. Number 65. There have always been rumours that Obama and Biden had more of a complicated bromance than it may have appeared, as they're two very different personalities. In his book, former FBI Director James Comey said that Biden would often bring Obama's exchanges veering off into different directions. Number 66. Apparently, Biden would often rain on parades and big meetings, but that was kind of the point. I just realised that sounded like I was saying he was peeing everywhere, but I'm not saying that. He would often raise a contrarian point or play devil's advocate to force others in the room to defend their positions, which Obama himself said was very valuable. Number 67. Less valuable, though, is the fact he's a self-described gaffe machine, what with his love of talking at length. To be fair, the definition of gaffe has somewhat changed over the past few years, so he should be good, really. Number 68. One such gaffe was back in 2012, when he said in an interview that all couples who love each other are entitled to the exact same rights. Now of course this is totally correct, and a great opinion to have, however some took it as an announcement of the White House's position on gay marriage, which it wasn't ready to declare yet. Number 69, I'm not doing the usual 69 thing and you'll see why now. After winning the 2012 election, Obama made Biden the head of the Gun Violence Task Force, which aimed to address the frankly horrendous levels of gun violence in the states, for instance in schools. Number 70. Biden actually had some experience in this, having led the last major gun control effort in the Senate almost 20 years previously. And much like the measures put forward then, all the legislation put forward by Biden and the Obama administration in 2013 failed to pass the Senate. Number 71. President Obama awarded Biden with a surprise Presidential Medal of Freedom in 2017, the highest honour you can bestow on any American. So you know, they got on. Number 72. There was loads of speculation about whether or not Biden would run for president in both the 2016 and 2020 elections, giving ambiguous statements and bond titles like Never Say Never, and one day saying he didn't think so, and the next saying he would. Number 73. A lot of this uncertainty followed his son Beau's death. In a 2017 New York Times article, Biden admitted that he would not have been able to cope emotionally had he run in the 2016 election, a year after Beau's passing. Number 74. He also stated that once he decided not to run for president in 2016, he regretted not doing enough to support Hillary Clinton's presidential campaign, instead focusing more on how the other candidate would not be fit for office over what Clinton would actually do to help the middle classes of America. Number 75. In the 2020 election, the uncertainty whether Biden would run was once again rife. Whilst obviously he did decide to run, he first had to battle Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren, among others, to secure that Democratic nomination. Number 76. In a tearful interview with MSNBC back in January 2020, he said that he believed his son Beau should be the one running for presidency instead of him, but that his son is always with him. Number 77. So, from February to August 2020, Biden took part in the Democratic Party presidential primaries. Well, that is a mouthful. He ran against 25 other candidates, which just so happened to be the largest amount of candidates for any US political party since 1972. How about that? Number 78. On April 26, 2019, Biden's campaign announced that they'd raised $6.3 million in the first 24 hours, surpassing all other candidates' first 24-hour fundraising totals for the Democratic presidential nomination at that time. Number 79. 
Biden's fundraising came from 128,000 unique contributors, equivalent to that of Beto O'Rourke's campaign, but about 40% lower than that of Bernie Sanders, who had around 223,000 unique contributors in the first 24 hours of his campaign. Number 80. Now, as we know, Biden absolutely smashed the primaries and became the Democratic nominee with 2,687 delegate votes out of a total of 3,979. He only needed 1,991 to win. Number 81. In August 2020, Biden announced he'd chosen to run with US Senator Kamala Harris as his vice president running mate, particularly after calls for his VP to be a woman and, after the Black Lives Matter movement in summer 2020, a woman of colour. Number 82. Next came the big bit, which was running against the Republican nominee and current administration. Three televised debates took place over September and October, or rather they were meant to, but it was really two and a half thanks to Covid, but boy, were they entertaining. Number 83. During the first of these debates, Biden's now infamous quote, Will you shut up, man? was said as he was constantly interrupted, which led to memes aplenty and even some ice-cold merch. Number 84. We don't have enough facts to go through all the debates and the issues raised, but what I will tell you is that after the first debate, 60% of debate viewers thought Biden won, compared to the opponent's 28%, according to a CNN poll. Number 85. The final debate was actually a lot easier to watch and was praised for each of the men going into their proposals in more detail. But once again, according to a CNN post-debate poll, Biden had a 53% share of the winning votes, compared to 39% from the other side. Number 86. Unlike somebody else, you can actually find Biden's tax returns from 2019 to 1998 online from a variety of different sources, with 22 years of financial documents to be impressed and kind of bored by. Number 87. There was a huge scandal involving the sitting president attempting to coerce Ukraine to try and find salacious information on Joe and Hunter Biden to benefit their campaign, seeking a quid pro quo arrangement, which over here just means a pound for a professional status quo tribute act. Number 88. This resulted in the president being impeached for abusing the power of his office and obstructing Congress by the House, but he was acquitted by the Senate later. It's worth pointing out though, there's been no evidence produced of any wrongdoing by the Bidens. Number 89. Apparently Biden is teetotal and so does not drink alcohol, stating there are enough alcoholics in his family. Number 90. In fact, his one true vice is ice cream. Yes, Mr. Biden is admitted to having a sweet tooth and loves to indulge with a scoop of the cold stuff. In comments from 2016, he even introduced himself at a podium with My name is Joe Biden and I love ice cream. He added, I don't drink, I don't smoke, but I do eat a lot of ice cream. Number 91. Mr. Biden currently has two dogs called Major and Champ. He got Champ, a three-year-old German Shepherd, in 2008 and adopted Major, who's the same breed, ten years later. Number 92. But he's also told a few fibs in his time. For instance, he once said he was shot at in Iraq, but later clarified he was near where a shot landed. He also said he was arrested while trying to visit Nelson Mandela in South Africa, but actually he was just detained. Number 93. While on a tour of the Balkans in 1993, Biden met with the Serbian leader Slobodan Milosevic. Biden says he called Milosevic a damned war criminal to his face, though some others present at the meeting recall it was phrased more diplomatically than that. In fact, nobody can really make up their mind on what actually happened. Number 94. Biden's also a bit of a petrol head, which must be a nice thing for the environmentalists to hear. Not only does he get phone notifications from car and driver, whatever that is, he also owns a 1967 Corvette Stingray that his father, who worked at a car dealership, gave him as a wedding gift. Number 95. A close friend of John McCain, dating back to McCain's time as the Navy's liaison to the US Senate, said that Joe and Jill were the reason he even spoke to the woman that would eventually become his wife in 1979. Matchmakers, eh? Number 96. He was also in an episode of Parks and Recreation. Leslie's reaction is probably what a lot of us are feeling right now, to be honest. According to Polar, he didn't even flinch when she improvised that lean to a kiss. What a pro. Number 97. What you might not know about this cameo, though, is that the Secret Service guard at the end of that clip is a real guard, and Amy Polar just dragged him into the scene to improvise. To be fair, though, he is precious cargo. Number 98. In February 2016, Biden gave a speech at the Academy Awards ceremony that year that focused on assault awareness, and then introduced Lady Gaga and her song Till It Happens To You, which she performed with Survivors. Gaga would later go on to campaign with Joe Biden on the ground. Number 99. Biden has said his favourite movie is Chariots of Fire in a 2008 interview, explaining that there is a place where someone put personal fame and glory behind principles, and that to me is the mark of real heroism. Number 100. During this, uh, tumultuous transition period, he's already got to work. He's gone all Nick Fury and is assembling a team to combat the ultimate Thanos-like threat of, uh, the coronavirus. 
It'll be made up of all sorts of qualified people, like the former Surgeon General Vivek Murthy and Dr. Marcella Nunez Smith of Yale University. Number 101. Yep. Yeah. His inauguration is due to occur on the 20th of January 2021, forbidding anything uh, else happening. So there he is, gang, your 46th president. A man with the philosophy the art of living is simply getting up after you've been knocked down. So that was 101 Facts About Joe Biden. What do you think of Joe? Let me know in the comments down below. Oh, no rhymes. <laughs> if you like this video, why not subscribe? And hey, in the meantime, look at these two videos on screen. They're all for you. Yeah, you. That's right, you. Click on one and see if I'm right. Go on, go on, and I'll see you there. Goodbye now.